Hi everybody, this is Corey at More Guitars and More Music Evansville, Indiana. It's another episode of Little Guy with a Big Guitar. Today, I not only have a big guitar, uh, a wonderful Fender American Professional 2 five-string P bass, along with a killer Mesa rig. That's what you're going to be hearing. What I would really like to show you today is the Dark Glass Atom. It's the aggressively distorting advanced machine, and it is everything that it says it is. It is super aggressive. It distorts. It is very advanced, and it's a very well-built machine. So, what they've done in this is taken their dark glass, uh, alpha, omega, all of their other distortion uh, platforms and placed it inside of this unit. This thing pretty well does anything you would want it to for especially heavy music. Uh, if you're like me and you're into to doomy style Sabbathy goodness uh, and, and rock, you probably have a, a, a fuzz and a distortion on your bass board already. This has all of those sounds already pre-built. Uh, it is made by dark glass, so you know the quality is extremely high on this. Uh, the housing is a wonderful aluminum housing. Everything is laid out very well. Let's go over some of the ins and outs. Of course, we have our quarter inch guitar in input. We also have an XLR output on the outside for a direct interface into a sound system or board. Uh, we also have balanced uh, stereo line outs on here uh, that can be used to go straight into a DAW. That's something that we're doing here uh, today. It also has a USB out to connect to your computer, also to download more sounds, more cab IRs. Uh, it has an auxiliary in, so you can pump music into it. Uh, and it also has an eighth inch uh, headphone out jack, so you can practice silently. So you can basically take this on the road with you and if you have a good set of uh, monitors, you can perform on stage. Uh, if you just travel for business or whatnot and you still want heavy tone, you can pump music in here, uh, put your headphones on, and not bother anybody in the hotel room. Uh, it also features a MIDI in. It's a TRS 8th inch uh, MIDI in, so you can control everything via MIDI. So if you have a switcher, in a unit already working, you can add this uh, and it's going to work great. This will work as a standalone preamp and uh, drive unit for you. You can turn off the, the different distortion units that are in here and use it simply as a preamp. It comes with a lot of flexibility in the equalization um, and in the compression. The, the compressor is really great. Let's start with the EQ. So what we basically have is a, a six band EQ. It has a, a low shelf and a high shelf. Uh, it starts at 250K and goes up to 3K on the top end. So a lot of flexibility. These are sliders. They're uh, uh, almost infrared sliders. So you can, you can see that as I slide my finger across it, it does change the EQ setting on there. Very simple to use. The compression in here is uh, a limiting type compressor. It's really, really great. So what it's going to do for you is it's going to bring your lowest of lows as far as volume goes. It's going to bring those up to a comfortable level. It's going to take your high, the highest of the highs and squish that down to a comfortable level also. So you know you're always feeding your recording or sound engineer a nice uniform signal um, and does work very well. The compression on here is controlled using two knobs. These uh, foot pedals, you can, you can depress them, but they also rotate and give you, uh, on this one, this controls the compression and gives you different ratios of compression. It starts at two to one and goes up to, I believe, a 40 to 1. Let's take a listen to, to what the compressor does. I'll start off with 
a lighter distortion. This is on a two to one compression ratio. As I turn up the compressor knob, this is going to open the uh, threshold up a little bit. So uh, for a less compressed sound, you're gonna wanna turn it counterclockwise. Uh, let's take a listen to the two point, uh, two to one, and I'll play a little bit with the pick. I'm gonna do most of this with the pick because I know all of you, uh, most of you heavy guys, play with a pick or you play with a really strong right hand finger style attack. So uh, I'm gonna try to replicate that as best I can. So here is the compressor set at two to one with the light compression. And as you can see, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't squash the signal too much. Uh, it just kind of levels everything out. So let's turn that all the way up. You will get more volume because like I said, it's bringing your, uh, the lowest uh, volume notes, it's bringing those up, but it's also squashing uh, the attack on uh, any kind of peaks uh, that we may have, it's going to squash that and make that more uniform. Here we go again. Can you hear that? It's still ringing. It'll probably do that forever at that uh, compressed setting. So uh, bear that in mind. You can get a, a bit more sustain. Uh, as we turn this knob, you'll see the light change. I'm going to set it up for the highest level, the highest ratio, and a very high compression setting on the threshold there. Let's take a listen. So you can hear a little bit more squashed. Uh, don't have the dynamic range that I would at a two to one, uh, but definitely something useful if you've got a, a lot of noisy stuff in the front of it. Uh, you want to squash that signal uh, and make it a little bit more uniform for the sound engineer. So let's go and talk about the drive. So we have, again, two controls for the drive. We have a, a drive knob that is the amount of gain. And then down here on this uh, foot switch, uh, it doubles as your B selection. Um, you have five different distortion engines in here. So all of them sound different. I'm going to leave this set at right at 12 o'clock, uh, right at a medium gain. And we'll just kind of go through these uh, distortions. You can hear the character of them. They go from mild to wild. So here we go. bit more aggressive. That one sounded like it had a little bit more top end, uh, which is very nice. It'll help you cut through guitars. Here's the number three setting. Yeah, that's nasty in a good way. That's Miss Janet nasty right there. All right, here's the number four setting. I like this one because uh, the uh, EQ glows purple. I like purple. You should too.
Yeah, that's great. All right. Uh, we're, we're bordering on fuzz tone here at this point. There is so much drive to it. Here is the last setting. It is, all of a sudden turns into a violent red color. Don't be scared. Is, that is definitely fuzzed out. That sounds amazing. Um, so the, the drive, you can, again, turn the drive down even on the fuzziest setting. You can get a, a pretty fairly smooth sounding uh, fuzzy overdrive. That is totally workable, totally workable. All right, let's take this thing all the way up. Boy, this thing's rumbling equipment off of me. That's a nice feeling. Here we go with a uh, super wild, let's just turn it all the way up. We live on the edge, don't we? Wow, that's almost like a sawtooth wave uh, rolling through this amplifier. That's really terrific stuff. Uh, let's see here. We also have uh, on top of kind of an auxiliary knob to the uh, drive and the type of drive is the character knob. Now what the character knob does is basically adds uh, more mid and top end to the character of the distortion. So I'm going to roll this. Let me play it at 12 o'clock just a little bit here. All right, I'm going to roll that all the way back. Well, by golly, it does change the character of that distortion. Let's turn it all the way up. Man, that's good. That is good stuff. One of my favorite knobs on here, and the reason why this thing sounds so huge, uh, is the blend knob. So what they're doing is, is they're giving you your original signal, like you've completely bypassed this and gone straight into your amplifier. So you get all of the low end that you're used to, along with uh, the affected top mid and top end uh, is where that distortion is kind of focused inside of this box. So you still get uh, a great rumble. Uh, you still deliver all the low end that, that everyone expects you to as a bass player, um, but you also get a bit of the character uh, of the distortion. So let's turn this blend knob all the way back and you can hear. Great sounding five string P bass tone. Uh, nothing you haven't heard before. Now let's blend in and we're going to go to about 12 o'clock on here. All right, and here is completely affected signal on this unit. Right. 
You can hear some of that low end kind of uh, roll out of there once you get past 12 o'clock. Be careful with those kind of things. Um, you know, it may be the factor in you sitting exactly correctly in a mix uh, by boosting that a little bit and relieving a little bit of the, the lows from your signal. You may want to do the opposite. Uh, my taste and your taste are different for a reason. All right, let's talk about uh, a little bit about the, uh, the, the last knob is a level knob. You know what it does. It turns it up, it turns it down. I don't have to explain that or play through that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the cab IRs that are in here. There are some fantastic sounding cab IRs in this unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the cab IR and you'll be able to hear what, what it sounds like with just the, the distortion units running into the amplifier. Not bad, not bad. All right. We were on the number one setting, and I'll just play just uh, really quickly so you can uh, get that in your ears. That's pretty meaty. Here we go to the second cab IR. Number three. That sounds really good. That has uh, a bit of a mid scoop in there. I can hear um, quite a bit of low end and some nice sizzly high end. Sounds like a, a mid scooped style cabinet. All right, the number four setting. All right, and the number five. Boy, that number five setting is probably my favorite. That is really, really defined. You can actually, you can hear every note uh, and all the pick attack. Really, really great, uh, really great setting. So you're able to uh, adjust these however you like. It will remember where you're at uh, based on um, what you've depressed. You can see in the, the number A, in the letter A uh, setting on the foot switch, the, the character is actually rolled up further than we've, than we've got the knob. So uh, this may take a, a little bit to get used to. Um, if you want control, like on the fly control, you probably want to get it set up so that when you go to A, you've got the knobs right at the point where the lights are. Uh, that way you can grab the knob real quickly on the fly to, to change things. Um, if you're like me, you're probably a set it and forget it guy. You know, you work, uh, you get the sounds, you get them programmed in here, uh, and uh, you know, you just let them work for you in that regard. So this does have a, uh, a bypass switch by depressing both buttons at the same time, basically powers it down. Now it's no longer active. Turn that right back on. Also, you do have a built-in tuner, and it's a chromatic tuner, so you can use it. Uh, say you you play drop A or uh, drop G sharp or drop G. However, uh, this tuner that's built in will handle that. Um, 
this thing sounds wonderful. I chose a, a five string for a reason um, because I know uh, a lot of the heavy players like to play uh, tuned way down. Uh, this is tuned to standard, so keep that in mind when you're listening in. Check it out, the Dark Glass Atom, aggressively distorting advanced machine. Give us a call here at More Guitars or stop by our showroom in Evansville, Indiana. We'd be glad to talk to you about this and other Dark Glass products that we have in stock. Have a great day.